Hello and welcome to pre-hospital trauma care. Today, we will be talking about bag valve mask, what it is, how it is used. Lesson, we will focus on how to use the bag valve mask, why we might use it instead of traditional mouth to mask rescue technique, and any concerns that may come with using a bag valve mask. There are two sizes of bag valve masks infant and adult or child. The mask sizes are obviously different but so are the bag sizes as they deliver different amounts of air into the lungs. If you only have the adult size bag mask, it is not recommended to use an infant's. Only use the appropriately sized bag valve mask. Ideally, you'll have both sizes. It's always important to have the right size tool for the right size of the patient. Some aspects to be aware of concerning bag valve masks are the following. First, sometimes the oxygen reservoir will be attached right out of the bag from the manufacturer. Other times, you'll have to attach it yourself. Second, the reservoir is meant to be used with 100% pure oxygen. So when you deliver rescue breaths to the patient, they are getting a higher concentration of oxygen to compensate for any oxygen deprivation they may be experiencing. Third, you must first hook up the oxygen tubing to the oxygen inlet on the bag. If you don't see the oxygen reservoir bag inflating or if it's inflating too slowly, put your thumb over the outlet inside the mask. This will seal the bag system so no oxygen is escaping and the reservoir will fill more quickly. The oxygen should be set to high flow to fill the reservoir more quickly and to keep the reservoir inflated while delivering the rescue breaths to the patient. If you don't have a high flow oxygen regulator, pull off the reservoir and use the bag valve mask as a room air only bag valve device when sealing the mask over the patient's face there are a couple of important points to know first the shape of the mask you have the apex part of the mask that goes over the patient's nose and the bell part of the mask which is the wider end that goes around the victim's chin and under the bottom lip the specific method for holding and attaching the mask, the CE method. Your index finger and thumb form the C and go around the stem of the mask and are used to balance pressure on one side of the mask when attaching it, while your palm will put pressure on the other side of the mask. Your other three fingers will form the E as they grab the patient's mandible or jawline and draw it up into the mask. Do not push the mask down onto the patient's face. This will not provide a proper seal. It's your fingers and palm that creates the seal and it's the throwing of the mandible into the mask that provides the proper head tilt, chin lift before delivering your rescue breaths. If you do not see the patient's chest rise and fall, your seal is not tight and the patient is not receiving the life-saving oxygen they need. If you are not able to deliver rescue bread successfully using the bag valve mask, don't use it. Set it aside and use a regular rescue mask with a one-way valve and deliver breads mouth to mask. Do not waste time that the patient doesn't have 
as they are likely becoming anoxic by the second. And here's the benefits of using a bag valve mask. First, they can be safer when it comes to infection control. Second, they can deliver higher concentrations of oxygen with each breath. And another important to note is that bag valve mask works best when incorporated into a team approach. And bag valve masks require practice to perfect. So, if you are supposed to be using one as part of your own particular protocol, or if you simply see the benefits of using it when compared to the traditional mouth-to-mask rescue technique, practice as much as you can first. What do they say about the practice? It makes perfect. And perfect use of the bag valve mask could mean the difference between life and death.